Interracial couples of Reddit. What was the biggest difference you had to get used to? I think the fact that we're also a gay couple overshadowed the fact that we're interracial. My husband, who's white, ends up with more to adjust to though, since he took my Asian last name. He gets double takes whenever he gets called up for an appointment or something, but that's been the worst of it. No weird looks afterward or anything. We're very lucky in that pretty much everyone we interact with is perfectly fine with same-sex interracial couples. The worst I ever got was one of my daughter's kindergarten classmates asked me why my daughter doesn't look like me. This was just a curious five-year-old though, nothing nefarious. I gave a quick explanation of how adoption worked in terms of someone else being the biological parents, and then everyone went about their day. I'm white and married a Latino man. When his family says the party starts at 5 p.m., it actually means they don't even start cooking until like 7 to 8 p.m. If you show up at 5 p.m., you'll just be sitting around. Not really getting used to, but coming to terms with. I'm not in an interracial relationship anymore. But I'm white and my first two girlfriends were black. Learning my parents were actively trying to get us to break up because of the color of her skin was something I didn't think I'd ever have to deal with and had to do a hard look at how much I was willing to see my family after that. Low contact as of now. Not wearing shoes in the house. Kicking money upstairs to her family. Celebrating Chinese New Year reunion dinner. Making rice for practically every meal. Lucky customs. Like one year we didn't have a lot of money for Christmas gifts, so I wrapped up some practical gifts. I wrapped up some new kitchen shears and culinary knives, and I was scolded because you don't give those kinds of things as gifts because they sever the relationship. Not complaining, it just took getting used to. The big one. The extent to which casual racism and prejudice is still present, that I as a white man was completely oblivious to, both directed at minorities, everything from taking longer to get served at the bar to direct unambiguous hate, and within minority communities, refusing to hire certain other minorities, preferential treatment for lighter skin tones, etc. Some other observations. If we go away anywhere for any length of time, there is a ridiculously long list of family friends we need to buy gifts for. We go to visit anyone no matter how frequently, need to take a gift. It's now a budgeted line item. Really. My value as a man is at a first order, a function of my career and only my career. Doctor, lawyer, engineer, anything else in that order. It's how I'll be introduced. This is Skuksa, he's an engineer. And then I'm accepted as having certain social standing by default. Big extended community parties, awesome. The men drinking whiskey, whilst the women clean up afterward, is somewhat problematic. My husband is Ashkenazi Jewish. He and his family and Jewish friends seem to enjoy arguing for sport. There were a couple of times where I thought people were in relationship-ending arguments over politics, but they were totally fine 15 minutes later. My boyfriend is Guatemalan. I didn't know how deeply Catholic Guatemalans are. I went no contact with his family for over a year because of the way they treated me. His mother called me damaged goods, because I wasn't a virgin which was deeply triggering because I'm a sexual assault survivor. People have a distrust of me because I'm not from their social circle. They also really hate gay people, and one day I went off on his cousin. Apparently being an outspoken woman is also very frowned upon. Basically I don't speak Spanish. I'm learning. I'm not wealthy, they are, and my family isn't good enough. It's probably just them though. The rice. So much rice. Every meal. My boyfriend is Asian. I'm as white as white can be, and other than the rice, we are very similar. But oh my gosh, the rice. I now cook rice measuring with my knuckle. Before him, I cooked rice maybe once a year. Now it's two, four times a week. I've been really lucky to live in several countries, and therefore I've been in relationships with people from diverse backgrounds. I'm American-born, mixed race myself. I'm much older than the average Redditor. A few interesting notes. I dated two Koreans in Korea. Sex is less taboo overall than the US, if you're a normal and respectful person. Way too many people trying to fulfill some weird Asian fetish out there. Yet, women have this pressure to act cute, and it's so over the top and dramatic. It's like trying to imitate a television drama. I've dated several Germans. Pros, way fewer pleasantries. Way more just saying what is meant. Cons, way fewer pleasantries. Way more just saying what is meant. I've dated two African Americans. They both had huge energy. And then I met family and everyone brings huge energy. Then I met friends and everyone is raising the energy bar. Exhausting laughing out loud. I have lived quite a unique life. And it was boring compared to the normal everyday life in this context. Dated one Irish girl in Ireland. She was probably the funniest person I've ever met. Tight-knit family. 
kinda stereotypical Christian values while not being Christian at all. She was a picky eater. She was from North Dublin and constantly threatened to have me killed. That was interesting. Dated a few Australians, specifically Melbourne, which I'm told are different from the rest of Australia, because I lived there for years. A girl that weighs half as much as me drinks twice as much as me, wakes up the next day at 8 10 a.m. and plays footy, and comes home and calls the gals over to start drinking again, continues to make out with more girls than I could ever in my life, then somehow still wants to go home with me knowing full well I'm only there temporarily. So, yeah, I'm a bit drunk, sitting in a bar in Malta now and reminiscing on the amazing partners I've had in life. I am finally working on myself and hope to make one a bit more permanent someday. Thanks for reading, random stranger. Always being asked if we want to pay together or separate. Being asked if we're together or not. People assuming we aren't married to each other. I am Asian, he's white. Is that something all couples experience? Educate me, please. I'm Mexican, and my ex is Russian. I thought his mom hated me because when she said goodbye, she meant goodbye and would actually hang up. Quick communication later, I got at least three goodbyes before we got off the phone. Returning items was suddenly so incredibly simple. Never had any pushback, no hassle, nothing. Shopping in stores, I never had so much privacy shopping. I'm really used to that constant, can I help you? Are you finding everything okay? Constantly being spoken to by workers. Now, I got a white girl with me. They just let me shop. Her family's food. I really gotta talk myself up. It's only one time a year, but darn it. I will never get used to different fruits and cranberries being in your macaroni. The undercooked meats and general lack of seasoning is real. Most of my in-laws are really great. And then there's my brother-in-law and his wife. I am from Spain, but he keeps thinking I'm from Mexico and likes to use phrases like wetback and such while his wife is concerned that I should always have my papers in order in case we are ever stopped. I am a citizen here. Stupid Muppets. White male, black wife, spices and moisturizer. Our spice cabinet runneth over and we have a bottle of moisturizer in almost every room of the house. Now I also smell like cocoa butter. I'm white. She's Hispanic. Her family loves me. My family hates that she isn't white. I never knew that they were so racist until after they found out I wasn't dating a white girl. Not me, personally, but I'm Asian and have sisters married to white dudes. It's interesting to see them at family events, with everyone talking with random English words thrown in. They picked up on a few of our words and know when we're talking about them laughing out loud. What's sad is seeing my mixed nieces and nephews hate on our culture and think our food is weird. They like to deny being part Asian and claim they're 100% white, which annoys me. Her hair needs a lot of maintenance, and she's more sensitive to racial issues and oppression against marginalized groups. Other than that, and my look getting considerably more stylish, no difference. Either one by one's self, practically invisible. Both of us together, suddenly conspicuous. The glances on the street last a couple of seconds longer, and you notice lingering stares. You get told things along the vein of, it's so nice to see the world progress. You're my favorite couple. It's such a nice day to go out with your significant other. Way more than if you went out with someone of the same race or like your opposite gendered cousin, close friend, whatever. Stuff that you're not sure if it is some weird microaggression, an attempt at virtue signaling, or they're just genuinely glad race relations have improved since the 20th century. I kind of miss it. The biggest shock was just how pronounced of a dark bathtub ring she would leave when using my bath just once using the same bath bomb I would use. It's really a marked difference in lotions and products. I'm South Asian, he's East Asian. There have been a few differences around food once we started living together. He's used to eating meat with every meal, and I grew up vegetarian laughing out loud. So I compromise by making vegetarian meals for a few days every once in a while when I've had enough meat. Also, people somehow get real curious when it's two different people of color getting together. A waitress once literally asked him in Mandarin, how did he get a girlfriend like me? My husband is black. I'm white. He was shocked at how my long hair found its way everywhere. All over the shower? Check. Randomly around the house? Check. In the crack of his buttocks? Check. He was less than impressed with the last one. With me? That I couldn't run my fingers through his hair in any old direction without messing up his waves. I didn't know it had to be a certain way, and he didn't tell me. He said he liked me rubbing his head too much to tell me I was messing them up. It wasn't until he was rocking a slight afro and I asked where those pretty lines in his hair went and he glared at me and was like, you. He wasn't mad at me. 
He genuinely thought I knew and had just wanted to rub his head that badly. I was so clueless, I didn't even know they were called waves. My ex was Mexican with darker skin and I'm white, and the weirdest thing was how we knew it was normal to be together where we lived. But if we traveled anywhere south, north, or rural, we'd get weird looks and judged. My friend said her grandma from Iowa saw a picture of us and told her to not be friends with me. Yikes. I'm Mexican and my husband is white, so I got used to them doing Christmas on Christmas Day and not Christmas Eve. Nothing crazy, but I was so used to Christmas Eve being the big day. Black woman with a white husband in the UK. I think the biggest difference was how family is treated. In my culture, I cannot fathom leaving an elderly family member to live alone and fend for themselves, but that seems pretty normal for my husband's family. We talk about it a lot and he agrees it may seem weird but is expected. Also bonus of money. I am of the mindset that if you give someone money you really don't ask for it back unless it was pre-agreed, as in, if I can afford to buy you something I don't expect something in return. It seems in English culture everyone must pay each other back to the penny and not allow anyone to pay for anything. That's a real culture shock to me. My partner is from California, I'm from Singapore. I think the biggest difference is popular culture. Everything from your childhood television shows, the iconic music of your teens, even your education system is going to be different. You cannot expect your partner to know what Mr. Rogers is or have watched XYZ cartoon. All assumptions have to be thrown out of the window. I think it's a good thing to be honest. You start from zero. It makes you completely aware of how vast the world around you is and I keep learning new things every day. Just yesterday I learned that in California there's a mascot called Smokey Bear that taught kids about forest fires. In turn I told her about Singa the Courtesy Lion, which is a mascot to teach people courtesy good manners. We had an entire discussion about mascots and teaching populations and it was so fascinating. This happens so much that sometimes we can't stop talking to each other. I'm a white dude married to a black woman. I had no idea about the whole culture of hair upkeep for black women, how much it costs, how much time it takes, how much it's a connection point for her and other women. Interestingly, what was a bigger adjustment had nothing to do with race. I'm an only child and she is one of five, so obviously the family dynamics are quite different. Next month we will be married for 24 years, so I guess it's all good. The biggest difference I had to get used to was not talking to my mom anymore. She was not happy I married a white person and cut ties with me. There was also some subtle racism from members of my family, even though it was small comments I think it's for the best that I don't live near any of them. Mentioned this on another post. Had two biracial children in the 1970s. Had a woman exclaim, good lord, are those children mixed? To which I answered, no ma'am, one's a boy and one's a girl. The subtle and not so subtle racism by her family. My ex's family would ask if their belongings were safe around me, stuff like that. And I could never call them on it, because when I did they would play dumb or pretend not to understand. Out of the blue, for no reason, say they were proud to be white, and there is nothing wrong with being white, then give me the hard stare. Nobody would be saying otherwise. Who were they arguing with? Like I would be talking about cooking, but okay, go off. I learned that Korean and Irish families are extremely compatible at a party with alcohol. After visiting, I now believe Korea is the Ireland of Asia. Great first world countries that have a long history of being colonized, bury their feelings with alcohol, and party hard as heck. They also both really value family and talk crap to them constantly. Both love cabbage. My wife's family was always slightly racist, always gave her advice to pursue all her options regularly. The kicker was when I tried to marry her after six years together. We had a full-blown intervention at what was expected to be the lunch of us telling them. Parents, sister, the whole shebang. They blindsided both me and my wife and insulted me to my face and said they wouldn't support the wedding. Told her we were being ridiculous as I sat there. My wife sat there silently while they grilled me. I've never felt so hurt and vulnerable in my life. I could barely open my mouth to defend myself. I felt so small. We're still together and I love her, but I feel I lost a part of my self-respect and feeling of safety that day. She lasted a whole one month of no contact with them, but they seem to have learned a bit from the shock. Emphasis on a bit, they still haven't apologized to me. Anyways, thanks for the read, stranger. Edit. Since people keep asking and I've posted this elsewhere, her family are white living somewhere in North America, my parents are brown immigrants here from Asia, her parents are atheists, she is an atheist, my parents are Muslim, I'm an atheist. I was born here in the same city as her where we've known each other since age 13. 
going two decades now. White male here that dated a black woman for a while in my late teens. Overall, it was good for us. Her immediate family liked me. It wasn't until I went to her family reunion that it changed. We were both made aware it was wrong for us to date, even though a couple of guys had white girlfriends and wives. They also got into her little brother's ear. Me and him would play games and all, but after that, he wouldn't speak a word to me. Her parents caught a ton of criticism also for allowing me to date her. Her parents apologized. It wasn't their fault, but they were super hurt and embarrassed. We didn't break up because of that, but it did affect our relationship after. Culturally, Asian men do not talk about their problems or stress. It's a sign of masculinity to just quietly bear it all. So when things get rough, whether inside or outside of the relationship, my husband just becomes really quiet. At first, I thought maybe he's just really focused or motivated at the time. He doesn't express anger at all, but at the same time he doesn't express anything at all. That's when I know something is up with him. Coming from a half-Latino household, we are very loud and expressive, especially when we are stressed out, worried, or angry. The Asian and Latino cultures are so opposite in so many ways, but yet so alike, it's quite a journey being married to an Asian man. I wouldn't have it any other way, to be honest. I think bringing cultures together through love is one of life's greatest things to witness and be a part of. I am white. My estranged family still implies that my Filipino husband is a scammer and is only with me for the money and Canadian citizenship. We have been together for almost 15 years, married for 12. You think that if he was only with me for the Canadian citizenship, he would have left me 10 years ago after he became a Canadian citizen. I don't even make a lot of money. He doesn't even make a lot of money. But we are comfortable and extremely happy. There is a reason why I do not speak to my family anymore. An ex was Latina. And while there really weren't any social things that were new, getting used to her family dynamic took some adjusting because they were very close and involved in each other's lives. So it was normal for the weekend's inevitable barbecue to be something I was expected to be present for if she was going. Because otherwise 16 plus people would grill her about me not coming. I was born and raised in the Netherlands. I'm half Italian, half Indonesian, but did not grow up with those cultures at home except a little. My girlfriend is Persian. In the Netherlands, or at least in my experience, when people say no to something, then they mean no. While apparently for Persians it's seen as polite to decline at least the first offer, often also the second even if you actually really want. So for example, if she would offer me a cookie and I'd say no, she would ask another three times before letting it go, which was cute but also annoying. Meanwhile, when I offer her a cookie and she says no, I just quit asking, and then she gets a little mad that I didn't ask her a couple of times more. It's not like the biggest difference or anything, but it's a cute, and in the beginning, a very confusing difference. Subscribe and like if my content is interesting to you. I post new video every day.